Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome at long last to the finale of Let's Play Okami. Before we board the Ark, Tuskel has some words for us. We're at the end, but this is not yet the end of exposition. <laughs> Must be true what the old legends say. But that means we get more art book pages. <laughs> The legend about how this Ark, which was sunk in Lao Chi Lake, fell from the Celestial Plane and into our world. It says the Celestials, who fell to our world with it, were eaten up by countless vicious monsters. By the army controlled by the evil ruler of darkness, Yami. So the Ark of Yamato is related to the powers of darkness. How can such an enormous thing float in the sky like that? Yeah, no, we're not redoing that. So, 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 it is time to cross the Rainbow Bridge and board the Ark of Yamato. Yeah, you know what will happen if you cross the bridge. You know, don't you? I mean, that boat is bad news. The people of Kama, we all know that. It's the most hated and feared thing in all the land. Even legends have nothing good to say about it, or Lao Chi Lake. And you know there's no turning back once you board that thing. You look like you want to say something. Resolve? Metal Gear? Sorry, sorry. <clears throat> Metal Gear? Do you have the resolve? Of course. Alright, well. Don't you go dying on me like you did a hundred years ago. And you can see if we pan across the hull of the ship. You recognize these symbols. You know what's coming. Although one strange little absence we'll get to in a second. We're coming up upon not a dungeon, but a boss rush. And then the final boss. How long has it been since we started this journey? In the Started in the Valley of Sakia's Chest. Oh boy. Then Orochi, we've skipped some steps, but yeah, generally he's got the gist went into an emperor's body, traveled to the bottom of the sea. Then before I knew it, I found myself back in my own land. And now it all ends with the appearance of the legendary Ark. But for you, it's just the start of an even greater adventure. Sorry, Amy. I'm afraid this is where we say goodbye. What? <laughs> As I told you from the beginning, I joined you so that I could steal those 13 rush techniques of yours. We found them all during our travels. And now each and every one has been etched into my mind. <laughs> so cute. It's not like I've mastered them yet, but... I plan on having loads of fun with my newfound skills. It's a bit sad to see you go, but you gotta do what you gotta do. Take care of yourself, pal. No, Amy, no. Look, you're a god. I'm a sprite. We live in completely different worlds. He's, he's talking like they're star-crossed lovers. <laughs> But it's one you're just going to have to walk alone. You're going to have to walk this lonely road. The only road that you have ever known. I know, I know. It's just I got things I need to do too, you know? What things, Eason? I can't stand long goodbyes. Farewell, my furry friend. As we go on, we remember... <laughs> I hate that song. 
We gotta go our separate ways. Now leave me alone, you thick-headed lump of fur. All the friends we... <laughs> He's right. Oh no! <laughs> Your way lies within the Ark. See, if we hadn't gone back for Isun, we could have made it inside without having to encounter Waka. At last. But you know what that means. At last, a, pe a path to the heaven has opened. Fantastique. I know he didn't say it. But this is our last opportunity, so a very hearty bonjour to all of you. So anyway, anyway, what is he? Jesus, Eason? Called him a fruitcake, which... Given this was a, a mid-2000s game, like, <laughs> Jesus, what an asshole. I have no idea what you're up to. Frankly, I don't care. I'm not part of this anymore, so I'm gonna split. Have fun! Eason, if I have to deal with Waka, you cannot abdicate your duty of having to also deal with him. Afraid of the legendary Ark, are we? What'd you say? Well, if you must go, then go! Besides, only those worthy of the trip to the heavens may board the fabled Ark of Yamato. You never had a ticket, and you never will. While you witless, two-bit, half-baked prophet, you're just trying to trick me into getting on that stupid boat. I love referring to it as, a, as just a boat. Normalize floating steel arcs. <laughs> Maybe I should just hop on board your little boat. <laughs> yeah, and then I should tear the place apart as a little parting gift. You never had a ticket and you never will. <laughs> Don't blame me. Only those worthy of the trip to the heavens may board. But you didn't need me to tell you that, my little bouncing friend. You know very well why you can't board this Ark. <gasps> Do I not speak the truth, little Celestial Envoy? Well, it's about time. My little friend, I have another prophecy for you. Listen up, because this will no doubt come in handy for you. It takes two to tango. I love this video game a lot. The bond of the brush shall intercede. <laughs> Beautiful. Perfect. Excellent video game. <laughs> Pretty good, don't you think? Yeah. Amy is an amazing dancer. Not to take credit from Waka, who's pretty good. Life is all about resolve. Outcome is secondary. I don't agree with that. It's resolve that determines the value of your life. You have no doubt met many such resolute people in your journeys. Plenty of people with plenty of resolution for terrible convictions have existed. <laughs> uh, we have a date with Destiny, Destiny, and we mustn't keep her waiting. So we've replaced Oki and Susano with Waka for the very final stretch of this game.
So once again, seeing the murals uh, signifying each of the bosses, which you'll notice Lechku and Nechku are absent, even though we did we did see their souls fly off to the Ark. Marco, some sort of celestial angel. I, Marco, would like to welcome you on behalf of all celestials. Oh, I made a mistake. I said that you'd returned home, but of course I was wrong. Uh, this is inside the dreaded Ark. Yep, this is not new information. Only my spirit remains in this world. It's been imprisoned here for many years. Perhaps it was my destiny. Okami Amaterasu, I'd be so grateful if you could bestow upon us a small gift. Oh yeah, like a favor or something? Do you need me to get something for you? Or like, what's up? Not only for me, but for the others who succumb to death. Oh yeah, we can give an offering. Oh, money or demon fangs? Ah, okay, you're our last shop. <laughs> I love how it sets you up to think it's going to be some kind of last minute side quest or, or something. But no, it's the final shop. <laughs> Uh, so, before we get started on the boss rush... Oh, yeah, he has the last two gold dusts. Excellent. Uh, because I believe either our Thunderstrike or the Eighth Wonder... I think it's the Eighth Wonder... Uh, still is not upgraded yet. And I think whatever is left over... We can just use on the Solar Flare. Uh, a very, very special shout out to uh, Ghost Wolf, who's been a subscriber from nearly the very beginning of this channel. Uh, back when I was getting like 10 views a video, and that was the most exciting shit ever. And it still is. Like, it's. Oh, man. It's wild to think about given the length of time it's been. Uh, and they've always been great and very kind, and also the biggest fan of Okami I've ever seen. Uh, they've been asking me to Let's Play Okami for, I'm going to say, at least six years. Uh, and this is one of their favorite parts of the game. You know what? Actually, I'm going to leave Nine Tails for last as a little treat to me. Uh, because that's my favorite boss. So let's start on the other side with Blight. Uh, anyway, yeah, this is one of their favorite parts of the game. Oh, Hakaba. Ah, oh, one second, Hakaba. So I was going to have them come on and just gush for a minute or two, but uh, we couldn't work it out. So I just want to say thank you, Ghost Wolf, and enjoy the ending of the game. So Hakaba is kind of an old acquaintance of Amaterasu's, or at least Shirinui's, our previous incarnation. We were heartbroken after the battle on the Celestial Plane. When you fell to this world with that monster, that monster being Orochi, we managed to escape before it happened, but little did we know that... The, uh, little did we know the tragedy that was to befall us. After we ran away from the battle, we boarded the Ark of Yamato, hoping to get away. But not long after we set sail, countless monsters appeared from the depths of the Ark. Having nowhere to run, all of us were devoured by the monsters. This Ark, which was built by the Lunar Civilization, turned out to be a cargo ship designed to transport thousands of monsters. Not long after setting sail, the Ark lost its rudder and plummeted down to this world. The Celestials on board, each and every one of us, were slain. I don't know why the Moon Tribe built such a thing. But when the Ark fell to this world and brought such tragedy, well, it was nothing short of a disaster. Okami Amaterasu. It seems that the Ark has begun to move again after all this time. But this place is like a nest of dark beings. Please take care not to be sucked into the darkness. Don't worry, we will not be sucked. 
<laughs> Alright, so what we what we would normally do here, what I would normally do is I would uh, I would cut at this point. And I would do that for each of the boss refights because we've seen them before. There's nothing new about them. But in fact, because they are exactly the same, and we have gotten a lot more powerful, this is actually an opportunity to kind of just flex on some bosses for a little bit, and it's very gratifying. Like, watch this. Just annihilated him in one cycle. And pretty much every boss is going to go that way, except for Orochi, who we're going to be fighting for the third time, unlike everyone else who this is going to be our, our second round with. But Orochi, you already know, is a long fight, regardless of whether or not you can one-cycle his phases. His phases are long, so I will be cutting that refight out, especially since, again, we've seen that one twice already anyway. Uh, everyone else, I'll probably leave in. Also, seems one of the dark beings has disappeared. And this is her time to finally depart. We'll meet two other... Uh, two other Celestials. One after Orochi, and then one for the... I believe it should be the final? No, the penultimate uh, boss. But we're coming up on Orochi. Again, we're cutting that out, so I'll see you in just a second after the fight's finished. Last hit on the last head of the last time we're going to have to fight Orochi. That's right, I did get hit that one time. So remember, um, a while back I was saying that when this started, they really didn't have much to go on. They had nature being their key theme, and they had Ami, basically. That was it. Um, it was gonna be the, this PS2 attempt at bright photorealism, and she was just a regular white wolf, so she looked like a dog on the PS2. She looked like Huey from Resident Evil 4, except Snow White. With the sole exception that uh, grass and flowers would bloom under her feet. That was there from the very beginning. Uh, and I think I might have to cut that off for a second because we have another Celestial. Sato. Lo and behold, it's the guardian of our home, the Celestial Plane. Why did such tragedy befall us? This Ark was built by the Lunar Civilization as a rescue boat. It had been enshrined in the Celestial Plane for many years. We believed it would be safe. In order to ensure our future existence, we fled to the Ark when the monster attacked us. How could we have known this Ark would become our coffin? I don't... I don't know. Maybe it was our destiny. Perhaps it was all decided from the start. Something which has come up from the Celestials multiple times now. That monster Orochi who attacked the Celestial Plane had suddenly come flying across the Sea of Stars. And after destroying our people and our homeland, it went on to cause pain and suffering in this world. Perhaps it was all preordained by the Moon Tribe. We'll kind of get back to that in the arc uh, in a moment. I want to pick back up with this thought, though, while we refight the Spider Queen. One of the artists on the game, uh, Takayasu Sawaki, 
deserves an enormous amount of credit uh, for the for the game turning out the way it turned out because it was his rendering of Amaterasu in the Sumie art style that was the catalyst that the Okami development team needed. Uh, the team switched the game's visual style to that entirely, and not only that, but... Oh, look how quick we're going to tear through these. This is also going to be a one cycle, and very satisfying at that. I kind of floundered on this fight the very first time out, to be honest. Incredibly satisfying. Uh, the mechanic of of participating in the art and the brush strokes uh, through the celestial brush came as a consequence of that shift to that visual style. It followed from there. And if I had to guess, the decisions to make this game about nature using traditional Japanese visual style, or a uh, a traditional va Japanese visual style, probably also informed the decision to then make the story a love letter to folklore. Could it be that man from the Moon Tribe I sense on the Ark? I can feel his pain somewhere deep down inside. This arc, Amaterasu, you must save him without a moment's delay. You must stop the seeds of tragedy from being sown. In order for the evil in this world to be exercised, the sun god Amaterasu must return to the celestial plane. I pray that you'll watch over the world from the heavens and that you'll bestow peace upon us all. This will also be her final moment. Their final moments? Theirs. I think that really just in bold red text tells you what this game is about. You must return Amy to the celestial plane to exercise this evil, to restore nature. That's really what this evil is. It's a desecration of nature. This game is about nature. This... The impetus for this game was... Reminiscence and fondness for the natural beauty of the countryside. And... How do we restore Amy? Well, through the brush techniques. And through praise. How do we get those? By doing things to help ordinary people and thus be worthy of the power to actually fix some of these large cosmic scale monster problems. Amy's role in the story is to do whatever she has to do to restore people's faith in the gods. She depends on everyone, and they all depend on her. And she is very much a goddess of nature. We depend on nature. Nature depends on us. And the story of Okami is about that connection withering and the adverse consequences that it's having and needing to restore that connection. Make right what is wrong. Get Ami back to the celestial plane. And of course, there are a lot of other things you can take from that too. And one of those things is that this also feels fairly conservative. It's a story about returning to a status quo of a literal mythical past. But also it's a very broad light versus dark metaphor in which you can map a million things onto it. I do want to get back to this, but my brain is absolutely dying to finish this other thought, which is not relevant to this one. But I found out from a video by Silver Dwarf, um, this video is a fantastic deep dive into Okami. One of the ways you were going to be able to help people that you come across in your journey was building roads. 
like Death Stranding. And I guess I did just tie that back around into what the point of the game is in a way. Waited for the chosen one to put an end to Orochi's life. This is Azumi, by the way. You waited patiently for countless moons until finally the chosen one, Nagi, was born. Together, you sent the monster of the moon to its fate. You didn't realize it, but that was just one ripple in the wave of darkness. It's exactly a hundred years since the legend of Nagi. The monster was quietly recovering its strength for all those years until it used Nagi's descendant, Susano to complete its revival. And once again, it tried to destroy this world. When you defeated it, the next stage of its plan began. It cursed the land with its evil power. And the world was soon overrun with monsters from the Ark. Orochi's evil essence was more than enough to power them all. The smoldering powers of darkness exploded throughout Nippon. Hey, it's those two bosses that aren't going to show up again. The only ones we fight once. And what a fight it was. After that, well, you saw with your own eyes the evil powers that left those monsters you defeated have all gathered here in the Ark of Yamato. All except the ones we're showing. <laughs> Exorcism of the Roots. Uh, da, da, da. You must keep your eyes open for what's in the center of it all. Yes, what's literally in the center, which is going to be a portal once we are finished the boss rush. <laughs> Now, before we leave the Ark of Yamato, we have one more uh, boss refight and then the final boss. Uh, something worth noting about the Ark of Yamato is that it's an enormous battleship named the Yamato. Uh, the Yamato is one of a class of Imperial battleships, and the concept art for the Ark of Yamato has it named as the Ark of Musashi, which was one of the other Imperial battleships in that same class. Which is one thing, I think. But even more egregiously, quite egregiously, actually, uh, is this game's heavy use of the rising sun imagery. Uh, sometimes color shifted slightly, but it's even on a lot of the versions of the box art. And just as a heads up, the rising sun is also a symbol of Imperial Japan. It was their battle flag. Do not forget that they were ultranationalists. The fascists who did unspeakable things very much in line with the Nazis that they were allied with. So it's not a great symbol to use. <laughs> and I point all of this out not because I'm trying to make the case that Platinum is full of crypto fascists, but to say that a lot of that iconography and even sentiment survived the end of World War II and became very normalized, in part with some help from the U.S. Uh, who had a vested interest for some reason in not holding the fascists who were in power accountable. We did the same thing for Germany. Check out Operation Paperclip, among others. Oh, but that's a different can of worms than where I was going with this. <laughs> It's worth being aware of that and the history of this stuff because all media is sending you messages. Some of them are intentional, some of them are not, but you're absorbing all of it. So it's better to be critical and just generally aware of stuff than it is to just be passively absorbing.
Uh, and this is not irrelevant to the mythology that we're experiencing, because remember, a lot of this part of the game is based around indigenous Ainu uh, myths and culture. They were themselves victims of an ultranationalist state that often killed them or forced them to discard their culture to assimilate with Japanese settlers. She's talking about the man on the moon with the golden hair. I want you to tell him something. The Celestials will never forget how he fought alongside you when Orochi attacked. The man with the blonde hair. We're ever grateful. And that is her departure as well. And we can finally proceed to the final boss in the center of the room. I want to pick this point back up though. Uh, real quick before we start that fight. Their homes were colonized. They were pushed further and further north. And their land and their resources were stolen and their culture and their heritage were stolen through forced assimilation. Just like we've seen happen elsewhere, especially here in the US. You call it Manifest Destiny, you can call it Lebensraum, uh, you call it Divine Right of Kings, it's settler colonialism. And the stories always rhyme. And Marco must join the others now as well. So if you got to this point and you didn't do your last round of shopping, uh, you were warned that this was a point of no return. You were not warned that Marco was going to disappear, but you're probably ready for this. Now, I will say this is the hardest boss in the game. That doesn't really mean that much, though, does it? Uh, so before this starts, while we're casting kind of a critical eye on history and how myths are often used in history, the source for a lot of these myths was the Kojiki, which happened to include a lot of references to a lineage of emperors descended directly from Amaterasu, the sun goddess herself. And as you can imagine, just like with medieval Europe and the divine right of kingship, uh, the myths from the Kojiki, and especially the stuff about, like, the Empire having a divine mandate, were used to enforce a cultural hegemony under the Japanese Empire. You could even draw a pretty good parallel between samurai and the righteous Bushido code, and how that myth was used to... Oh yeah, it was Waka. We faced Orochi together on the celestial plane. You can see the blonde hair that kind of peeks out. It hasn't been super relevant all game long. So it's an easy thing not to notice. Um, yeah, the, the Bushido bullshit used to foment nationalism and like the legend of the chivalrous knights. That likewise just served to like legitimize European kings. It's too dark to see his true form now. But for now, ponder the infinite orb of darkness. The dreaded day of darkness is upon us. Also, please take all of this with a huge grain of salt. I am an American and almost as white as Amy, or as H Bomber Guy once joked, <laughs> whiter than most brands of actual literal crackers. There are loosely connected observations. Uh, th these are more than they are like coherent critiques of the game itself, except that it makes me a bit uncomfortable to see so much Rising Sun stuff in particular. And remember, you can love a thing and still negatively criticize it. Then again, I don't think we really need that disclaimer here, but hey. What is going on with a Matarasu? Thirteen orbs. Thirteen brush techniques. All that work rendered down to nothing. A Matarasu 
reduced to just a regular white wolf. Kind of like we were talking about earlier in the episode. It's almost like I planned these. I actually didn't plan them. <laughs> and there's something so perfect about that, about the true form of Yami being this tiny, vulnerable little fish in a fishbowl. Still, I shall stand firm and fight this battle. It's a contrast against the godhood of Ami. I was oblivious to the evil that lurked in its depth. I caused the death of countless innocent celestials and brought a curse upon the land of mortals. It's real I sees an orb within an orb. However, I cannot reset my actions nor undo the past. How am I just realizing that that his hat is a bird beak? I, I never realized this before. <laughs> Amaterasu. Orochi can only be defeated with the power of the Chosen One. That's what I told you, and you waited for me without question. You waited patiently in this land of mortals. You waited for the day that Nagi the Chosen One was born. You believed in me, despite knowing that I count myself among the ranks of the accursed Moon Tribe who had escaped from the Lunar Realm. The accursed Moon Tribe who filled the, the Death Ark that crashed upon the land and brought demons and death and despair. It just so happened to be full of blonde-haired white people. Weird, huh? Amaterasu, you must return to the Celestial Plane. You must do so in order to bring peace to this world. Do you mourn, Waka? I kind of mourn, Waka. Oh, we even forgot to say bonjour. We did get one last chance, and we blew it. Shit. So we have to fight this without any of our powers, without our divine instruments, without our ink, without anything. Except, we're still a wolf. We have fangs. And apparently, it still have a pretty hard head. And once you hit it enough times, it'll finally lose its grip on your divine instrument and your first brush technique, rejuvenation. When it pounds down like this, you can see it leaves a depression in the ground, and then if it hits that again, like so, it'll break the floor open, but you can repair it with your brush once you get that initial brush technique back. And from here, we're going to have to re-earn the other 12 manually. The remaining 12, I should say. Now 11. This gives us... You can probably guess, Power Slash. I believe there is a set order to this. I think there's actually one or two that can vary. No, no. Am I right about that? I don't think I am. <laughs> so you know it. All those orb enemies and like Bayonetta and Astral Chain and Wonderful 101. Okay, Green Sprout. We can act we can actually use that. Perfect. That'll get it to bloom open so we can attack the core. And really just rip this form apart.
After all these years, we finally followed the chain on the orb enemies back to Okami. And now we can't really do anything to it while it's on fire. Remember, we don't have water spout yet. We could piss on him to put him out, but he won't stand still. Also, that doesn't work. <laughs> but beat him up a little bit more. And this should give us Cherry Ball. <laughs> It's okay. It's not lighting itself. What the hell? What? Never before in my life have I seen this. What attack was that? Okay. It's just doing things I've never seen before. Cool. <laughs> I love Okami. I love this game. It never stops surprising me. Now we have Water Spout, so when it inevitably immolates again, this is what the the pillars of uh, the, the fountains are doing along the perimeter of the room. There's another attack where that's actually useful, a separate one from uh, that. This! If it had done that before we recovered Water Spout, we would have had to have dealt with that attack differently. Uh, we would have had to do some platforming to get up to its exposed core. But platforming in this game is the devil. And we're trying to banish the devil. Crescent to make the moon come out. I believe in this fight, it does nothing. Uh, there's only a handful of brush techniques that don't do anything in this fight at all. Uh, that is definitely one of them. I think the other one is the ice one. <laughs> oh, yeah, this form. This form's kind of fun. Uh, you, you can intuit what the deal is. It's just a slot machine. Uh, if you... The thing that you're trying to aim for uh, is that orb. If you look above the fire symbol on the middle row, or in the middle column, uh, the orb is directly above that. We want to get one of those so the core will get will be exposed. If you get two, then uh, you'll get two different opportunities to damage it like that. And if you get three, which is not what I wanted, uh, then you actually get a full brush technique back. But without the Veil of Mist, which is not what we just got back, you have no ability to really influence the outcome. You have no you have no real agency here. You're just trying to hope you get lucky. And this was not. Well, we can do a little damage just by power slashing these back. I guess if we hit everyone, that's a decent chunk. And then we can also reflect the ice back. Some of it's going to hit. Ah, oh, the very last one. I think that the first couple are, are somewhat fixed. I think you always get an attack phase, and then you're guaranteed three orbs, and then an attack phase, and then three orbs. That's the way this always plays out for me, at least. But now we've retrieved Inferno, which you'll note is also not Veil of Mist. It does allow us to clean up the carpets of ice that he can now spawn. Just, just reveal your precious orb the once. Damn you. Okay, well, this should be the one that gives us Veil of Mist at least. It probably guarantees you a triple based on its health somehow so it, it can so the game can guarantee that you have all of the appropriate brush techniques going into the next phase and that you can't do some kind of it is so that you can't I guess soft lock the game somehow by going into that phase with out a brush technique that you need and that it can't provide at that point 
But hey, we're gonna actually get to do a little bit of damage. Uh, it's just gonna expose its weak point the once. Uh, you can see, because I have the fire tablet on, I put it on during the Orochi fight. Most of the fire attacks from this boss won't do anything, but also I massively squandered the chance to do damage. Also, you'll occasionally get stuff like that, like the ink refills, a little bit of solar energy, just because this is a fairly long fight. Now we're going to get two chances to do a little bit of damage. Too far away for that first one. Ah. So now, uh, one thing that does a lot of damage to this form is actually Inferno. It's another good reason why they give it to you uh, in this phase. Now... Oh, love having Veil of Mist back. No, it's a little bit of a curse. Either way, we just want two. We don't want three anymore. Just want two at a time. Oh, horrible. Wretched. There it is. And now, it, if things go really well... No, why did I go that way? Uh, hopefully we can end this phase on this cycle. Looks like it might be a little dicey. Oh, especially with that power slash missing. And the input not being read. No! Alright, we got one more. And then we can say that we have... No, don't get a third one. Just anything but that last orb. And it's definitely, definitely over. And we can say that we have beaten Okami. Finally, after all the false finishes, we have beaten the final boss. Except we have not. It had to be a little bit more than an orb at some point trying to think of what this reminds me of most. It's very cute for some reason to me. I mean, it's it's big and round. That's the reason. We are predisposed to liking big and round. Big and round is shaped like a friend. So the gimmick for this phase is that uh, after an attack, it'll expose the fishbowl. Once you slash the fishbowl three times, whoops, hit the desk. You will get a vulnerable phase. You'll get a brief window to damage him. And in the meantime, you just kind of have to deal with whatever temper tantrum Yami wants to throw your way. Oh, no. If you take too long, uh, you you will miss your opportunity. We can make that angle. Yeah. I think that's one of the rare fire attacks that does hurt us. Now, we recognize that, that pose that he's doing. And what we're supposed to do with that, we just don't have the means to yet. We still don't have our Thunderbolt back. But now we do. So the next time he goes for that attack. Perfect. What? No, I saw that. I saw that connect. That's whack. <laughs> okay. Yes, it did do the thing that time. Can we get through this in one? No. That's going to be two phases. Or two cycles. Uh, and just so we can get rid of the beeping. Just so we do not have to deal with that.
And I believe that we have recovered, if I'm keeping track, 12 out of the 13. It's either 11 or 12. Oh, by the way, the catwalk, you can see the cat statues in the background. So that actually can come in handy for this fight. You find uh, just like restoratives and stuff up there. And this should be it. Finally, after all the false finishes, we have beaten the final boss. Not bad for a ball. Well, you know the drill. Let's have one of those famous howls of yours. Master Hand! And we are back to square one. That furball is always spacing out like that. Amy can't get anything done without my help. Is that doggy crying somewhere, sis? Is that why the sunshine has disappeared? I haven't seen the doggy for a while now. Did my saying there's no such thing as gods cause all this? Snowy, the hole digging king. I never dreamt that you were a god. You're gonna make Hayabusa a nervous wreck. If you don't get that sun shining again. Amaterasu, thanks to you, we can protect our village by ourselves. But you must be strong and triumph over evil. For the canine warriors so dearly wish to see you once more. That god shore was burning with passion. I don't know what happened, but if that mongrel doesn't come out of hiding, I'll have to send up a really big one to reignite that passion. Tama is the fireworks es uh, expert. Yeah, Mr. Bamboo. Perhaps I should have made an offering of my bamboo ware. It may be my fault the sun go uh, that the sun has ceased to shine. Who would have ever thought that that rascal was really Shiranui reborn? My, my, how that god loved my cherry cakes. Could this darkness be caused by hunger? Oh, yeah, Jamba! Uh-oh. Boss is praying. Snowy, did something happen to you? Why has the sun suddenly disappeared? Fido won't roll over and play dead for evil. No brother of mine would dream of it. Yeah. <laughs> Something in your brushwork touches the heart, Eason. You never abandoned your life as an artist, after all. When one tries to master something, it ends in either success or failure. But it is in the attempt itself where you find the true value. Believe in your own power and walk your own path. Isun, I see you finally heeded your calling. 
I love this. Your resolve is plain to see in your drawing. It has the power to move people's hearts and inspire their faith in the gods. Amaterasu, their faith shall be your power. Even old man is Shaku. He did it. My grandson did it. Yeah. Yeah. Look at the spirit behind this beautiful brushwork. He truly deserves the title of Celestial Envoy. It's work like this that can show the true glory of the gods. And guide people to the right path. There's one thing I'm sure of, Amaterasu. You found a much better companion than I could ever be. We found the mythological ages Xerox machine, apparently. The great god Amaterasu. You're not floundering about without me, are you? You gotta pull yourself together. I finally chose my path, and I have the resolve to see it through. I've started to roam the land as your missionary. But you gotta take care of things on your end, too. Don't look so sad. Just psych yourself up, like we always did. <laughs> it's the great god of Matarasu descending from the heavens. Pretty good, huh? Ami was always smiling down from the sky just a little while ago. Wait, what? I think I misread that. <laughs> Something must have disturbed the furball's concentration, though. That's why the world has gone dark. Without Ami, we can't take a refreshing nap outdoors. <laughs> Rice won't grow. Plants and flowers will wither. Laundry won't dry. <laughs> Monsters will roam about like they own the place. In other words, our world will be a total mess. No one wants to live in a world like that, especially me. So come on, everyone. Let's join together to call upon the great god. Let's show Ami that we truly believe. Put your hands together and pray. Let's make our gratitude obvious. Yes, our gratitude to nature, to the embodiment of nature. We should consider how the gods must feel once in a while. Eh, must we? We should even take on some of their burden. In this case, when when nature, when nature, God is a metaphor for nature, sure, yeah. Maybe the sun will cheer up and show itself once again. Lighting our world with its heavenly glow. After all, the best thing about the great god Amaterasu is... That happy-go-lucky spirit. Okay. Answer if you can hear me, you big furball. Some people will say that Okami is overly long. And there are times where I, where I actually do agree. It feels like it's going too long in places. There's certainly fat that you can trim. But then it all culminates in this. And you feel the weight of the journey. You get this chance to reflect on everything and everyone. And have it come back around in this meaningful, empowering way. With everyone finally learning who you were all along, who you really were. All the people who you helped and whose lives you touched, even if only in a small way. And through their belief in you, you gain strength. You regain your strength. Even if you do take the pacing as a, as a slight flaw, it's ultimately in service of this, and it, it, this is just so damn... 
powerful. It makes me all misty-eyed. I love this part of the game so damn much. When I reflect back on all the things I love about Okami, this is one of the first things that I usually think about. This is honestly one of my favorite parts I've been looking forward to it this whole time. <laughs> oh, and now this really is the final boss fight. We've escalated about as far as we can. So it's time to finally wrap this all up. And it's a, a fast, hectic, chaotic final fight. Just kind of a sprint to the end. Ooh, good. I don't think I got touched by any of those. That's one of his harder attacks to avoid, I think. I think once again, it, actually no, this is, uh, I want to say one of like the two fire attacks that will hurt you in this fight. So the tornado, you can usually blow back uh, with Gale Storm, but with so little health left. Finally, after all the false finishes, we are about to finish Okami. lived. At last, our arch nemesis Yami, the Dark Lord, who brought darkness. <laughs> the Dark Lord of Darkness, who brought darkness upon the land of mortals, has been annihilated for all eternity. I must say I was really impressed by your little bouncing friend. You couldn't have done it without him. Indeed. Aww. That tickles. <laughs> Time to embark to even stormier seas. Making the world a better place is never easy. You must return to the celestial plane and set things in order. Only then can you usher in a new age of peace in the mortal world. Our journey is far from over, mon chéri. Yeah, now it's time for Okami too, right? That's any day now, any day. First stop, the Celestial Plane. Path to heaven, eh? Kinda sounds like fun. You remember what I said the first time I met you, Amy? There's no stopping me once I've once I've made a decision, so I'm going for a ball. And there's no way you're gonna stop me. I'm gonna pull out all the stops and inspire people's faith in you. 
You're gonna have more believers than you know what to do with. You'll see. Until then, take care of yourself, you big furball. Okay, are you ready to go fight the final boss now? No? No more bosses? We are done? We're done? Credits? We've actually gotten to the credits? I actually have to make this pretty quick because, uh... There's something I have to uh, time precisely here. So this is not going to be a long outro. Um, if you want to see what seal I made back in Poncton, if you want to see what that is, you have to wait until the very end of the credits, which, by the way, not that long. And if we weren't playing, if we were playing the Wii version, uh, this would all be for nothing because they straight up removed the credits from that version, which is horrendous. Clover was shut down by that point, and their logos featured in this uh, pre-rendered video. So instead of just making a new credit roll, Capcom made the all-time colossal asshole decision to just not credit the people who made the game. And this is somehow both legal and an all-too-common thing in the video game industry that persists to this day. Ah, uh, there will be a video on that at some point, because... <laughs> but on a brighter note, this was a wonderful, wonderful time getting to re-experience Okami for the first time in I don't even know how long. The game is just soothing. It carries some messages that I, I just sincerely love and a few that I think are questionable. But also, it's just a, a beautiful, absorbing way to not just passively take in myths, but kind of in, immerse yourself and take part in them. Even with its warts and, and kind of like poorly aged, problematic stuff. It's still just such a, a wonderful, wonderful game. I really hope you all enjoyed this. For as much as Okami is considered a classic, it sold incredibly poorly when it first released, and only recently has it crossed um, a million copies sold. Over the last 20 years, uh, which is far, far fewer than a game of this caliber deserves. Uh, so there's a very good chance that you might be experiencing Okami through this Let's Play for the very first time. And if that's the case, uh, thank you for sticking with me through this. And genuinely, let me know what you think of the game, because I cannot experience it for the first time again but I can experience it vicariously for the first time through others, or um, through others' first time. Uh, but as we end this chapter, we're that much closer to a new one beginning. Uh, we've got a few Demon Souls videos left, so that series will wrap up in the new year, and then we can ring in 2022 properly with Amnesia. And once we have forgotten the hell decade we're in, we will play some Amnesia Rebirth. Make sure to give the algorithm the things that it likes, please. It enjoys, it craves things like likes, comments, subscriptions, bell rings. I always thought the bell was stupid, but please ring it anyway. And also, twist the dial. There's not a dial yet, but in five years, when there is one, I'm going to be way ahead of the curve on that call to action. Thank you all for watching. 
Take it easy. <laughs> Have a good one.